Hey, welcome back to Athletes Lab, everybody. Today we got a special guest, uh, Alan Beck. He's an assistant coach at uh, at Georgia Southern, uh, and uh, he's in his sixth year. He just finished his fifth year down there at Georgia Southern. He's a, a local product. He went to South Caldwell High School. He played at Western Carolina. Uh, he coached up at Western Carolina. His playing career speaks for itself, man. He was uh, – uh, best year was 2003, Southern Conference Player of the Year. Had 18 home runs, got drafted in the 16th round um, that year and uh, by the Baltimore Orioles. And his uh, career got cut short uh, for an injury, but he's uh, he got right into coaching, and uh, he's done a fantastic job, man. So uh, good friend, Alan Beck, welcome. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. Appreciate y'all having me on. Yeah, man, we're, uh, we're looking forward to uh, – Getting you down to our athletes lab, man. Our our place down here, uh, in in your neck of the woods. So next time you come see some family, man, when this crazy stuff gets gets over, you need to come check us out and and uh, and, and hang out with us a little bit. Yeah, no doubt, I will for sure. Good deal, good deal. Let let me go get right into it, Alan. We we've we we've, we've known each other. We've played ball together a little bit uh, in high school, growing up a little bit. You know. Looking back, man, and, and, and kind of thinking about where, where you went in high school and a, and a big part of uh, of a lot of today's kids is, hey, man, I'll only play second base or, hey, I'll only play shortstop. Tell me a little bit, you know, I remember in high school you playing third base and then, hell, playing against you up at Western, you know, you were, you ended up, I think, in the outfield. So give me a, give me a little bit of a background on that, man, as far as importance. Yeah, the um... – I guess the old saying, if you hit, they'll find somewhere for you to play, uh, worked in my case because I wasn't a great defensive third baseman. Um, but I did have the opportunity to move up to varsity as a freshman and play because I could hit. I dh that first year, and then they found a home for me at third. I did that throughout high school in Legion Ball. Um, and then once I got to college, they found out, Coach Raleigh found out pretty quick that I couldn't catch anything I could chest it up and throw it over there but that wasn't going to work at that level so he uh he moved me to the outfield left field right field first base and uh it was just like playing ball just growing up you know catching balls throwing them up to myself it wasn't as hard as some people make it look it was fun yeah man it's just, you know just trying to get all the reps you can during BP practice all that kind of stuff but you know I like that part and that was kind of when I was coaching a little bit was, you know, you, you got to have some guys in there that can swing it. And, and if you can swing it, you know, they'll find a position for you. Um, so, I, you know, I, I think that's I think that's big because, you know, now, like I said, nowadays, man, everybody's kind of, you know, hey, I only play this, I play that. And, uh, you know, I want to hit off hit off on that, you know, from the start. A little story about Allen. Uh, it was a couple, hell, I guess it's been three or four years now, man. I'm Our f- season finishes in Division Two a little bit early. Uh, ends in usually about middle middle of April end of April, and so I take a I take a recruiting trip up to the Northeast, and I'm either going up to upstate New York, and I had to veer off into Maryland because the weather was bad up there. So I get to this game, nobody's around, you know, it's a junior college game, and and this kid's throwing on the mound, and you know he's freaking legit. I'm like, all right, I'm the only one in the ballpark, I may be, get a steal here. Talk to his coach, he's like, yeah, he's committed to Georgia Southern. And I call up Alan. I'm like, dude, what the heck, man? And uh, anyway, you you, got, you find him from everywhere, man. That guy was uh, that guy ended up being pretty good for you guys, huh? Yeah, no, he was he was great for us. Uh, and that was through uh, you know a guy on our team's dad uh, a text message, and we just followed up on it. And our pitching coach went to see him and liked him enough, and and he liked us enough. And he was a, a late bloomer, you know, Pennsylvania guy that um, just continued to get better. But, uh, yeah, get them from anywhere, but around around your area, I've had a lot of great players. Some of the some of my favorite guys I've ever coached have been Morganton, Hickory, Caldwell. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's 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 funny. A couple of those guys, uh, Austin Attaway, he was in the facility. He helps us out a little bit uh, before this corona thing got going. And he was uh, – he was one of my favorite guys, and and I know he's one of your favorite ones as well. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. A lot of them, your brother helped me out with. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. But the thing is, man, talk a little bit 
Um, we talked to a couple coaches uh, about the recruiting spot and, you know, the way they recruit and, and, and how they do that. Tell me a little bit about the relationships. Uh, I think you alluded to it a little bit there, the relationships that it goes with different coaches in getting recruits um, in, in general. Yeah, Matt, I think it takes time. you got to build your network of people that you trust. Um, and you can take it to the bank. Some guys, when they say a guy can play, he can play. That you don't need to get too caught up on the game that you saw. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's important to, you know, for the coaches to be honest with the college coaches and to be realistic and not try to push a kid too much because that could ruin a relationship quick. But at the same time, you know, whenever you do get somebody from a coach, you're going to tend to trust that guy a little bit more the next time he recommends someone. So just continual relationship building and, you know, the network of people that you, that you can trust. Right. How, how has that changed? You know, obviously being up here uh, in our area and coaching at Western, uh, you know, me and you went to a lot of different things together, saw each other on the road a lot. How, how has that is there a big change from from Western Carolina State School? Um, you know, had to get a lot of the majority of your guys' just scholarship money wise, and then you know maybe the same thing a little bit at, at Georgia Southern. But it, how is the recruiting same different uh, in those two programs? Uh, I would say it's the same because we're still looking for the same type player, a blue collar, a hard nosed kid that's going to outwork you know, um, the other people around him might not be there yet. But we're still projecting and wanting guys that we think that can develop and continue to grow. Um, but it's, you know, it, it's a little different in the recruiting spot just because we, we recruited Georgia while I was at Western. But, you know, in North, in North Carolina, you had those high school coaches that you played against that you had a, a long rapport with that when they said, you know, hey, this guy can play. He can play where well, I'd say Georgia is a little more travel ball. Um, I think you're dealing with those coaches a little bit more. Now our head coach makes us, you know, cross check every kid that we'll bring in. So we're going to talk to the high school coach 100% of the time, but, and maybe it's just because I don't know those guys as well, just from not being from Georgia, but it's, it's really, I mean, there's great baseball in North Carolina. There's great baseball in Georgia. Uh, and at the end of the day, a lot of the guys that I coached at Western, I would recruit again to Georgia Southern and vice versa. Yeah, man, you guys were, were dynamic. And, and I, I may be wrong here. I may be getting the years wrong, but I think it was 13 uh, at Western. You guys are, you know, near the, near the tops, if not tops in home runs in the country. And, 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 you know, very, very big offensive numbers as far as power numbers, that type of thing. And then, um, you know, uh, when you get down there with Coach Hennon to, to Georgia Southern, maybe a little bit di different kind of ball when you first got there. I think I read, man, all of a sudden you guys like have 75 sack bunts, you know, your first year or something like that. It's like, man, that's totally two different philosophies, and that just doesn't happen now, you know, and that's kind of what stood out to me. So what what is your – not not necessarily philosophy, but but what, what was going on there? I mean, just chasing W's. Um, you know, you, every team's going to be a little bit different. Um, and, you know, you just got to find a way to win and create offense within whatever group that you have. Uh, and that group was really selfless. I mean, they, we bonded a lot. We got hit. I think we were top 10 in the country and getting hit. We cut our strikeouts down. We just, you know, and that was the team that they were built like. Uh, last year, we were a little more offensive. We scored 400 runs. Uh, we're tops in the league and hitting one of the top couple teams. I don't know exactly what the stats look like, but, you know, I'll tell our guys our goal is six runs a game uh, and however we have to get those runs, whether it's bunting, uh, hitting, getting hit, walking. You know, I, I think we have a pretty uh, selfless team as far as that's concerned and a, a pretty good top to bottom offense. I think that's a key. Even your guys lower, you know, down in the order still be able to contribute and be productive. And that looks different to different people. It's not necessarily hitting home runs all the time. It'd be nice if seven, eight, nine can hit a bunch of them. But with realistically speaking, I mean, you know, you just got to get production out of those guys and that's scoring runs and, and driving runs in. So I, I think that should, that should set into a lot of, 
lot of uh, people listening out there, especially uh, younger parents uh, and, and kids trying to get recruited. It's not, hey, man, my uh, exit velo has to be 103. Um, you know, I have to hit this many home runs as a junior or senior in high school to get recruited. You know, I got to I got to work with my tools and then get better, get stronger, whatever it is. And and, and, and there may be a place for me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then, you know, guys get better. And usually it's the guys that work, you know, and that's the toughest thing to determine in the recruiting process is who your real workers are. And those come in all shapes and sizes. Um, but they, at, whenever they show and, you know, year one, year two, and year three, you know, they keep working and keep getting after it. Those guys pass a lot of the talented, more talented players. I mean, as you know, I mean, your most talented guys aren't always your best baseball players, but you need both. You need, you need both, both kinds. Yeah, you definitely need both. And, and that's, if I heard it once, I probably heard it, you know, 350 times in, in, in a couple year span when we were sitting down with parents and, and, and kids on campus. Hey, I know everybody's, everybody thinks their kid works hard, but my kid's the hardest worker, you know, all this and all that. And, Hell, when you get them on campus, man, you never see them, you know? Um, and so it's that balancing act. I agree with that, man. You just – and I think that's a, a big part, and I think that's what you do a good job of, Alan, is is, is doing that cross-reference check. You know what I mean? That you can you can talk to multiple coaches, some teammates if need be, and, and really get that, you know, big perspective on that kid and know as much about him before he gets on campus. Yeah. No, there, there's no doubt. And the, and the high school coach and the in the summer ball or travel coach, you know, the summer coach knows him. Um, the high school coach knows him a lot better. He's around him day to day. And, you know, character is really big in our program. You know, we want we want to be around good people. We want I mean, you got you have to be a good student. I mean, you better be very talented. And, you know, for us to look past that. But even then, you know, we'll, you know, we'll we'll always go and defer to the student uh, before just the player. Right. Now, what, what about the, the, the situation we're in now? I know different coaches have different perspectives on it. Um, is it, you know, I know you want to be in the now and, and this team or, or this, this coming up team in the fall. Um, what, what, what's it going to do the next couple recruiting classes? Have you guys kind of digested that or is it just kind of a wait and see approach for you guys or, or, or how's that going to do? Because obviously the, the reason I'm asking this is because, you know, uh, we, we've had kids in the area, parents, um, and I'm sure you have as well that are asking, Hey man, my kid's a sophomore in high school. You know, what, what, what's going to happen? You know, there's, there, you got a lot of, you know, you basically got two or three recruiting classes on campus now that aren't going away. Yeah, so, I mean, rules-wise, the seniors are exempt from anything. And so right now you still have to be at 35 roster spots with 27 of those guys on money with not counting your seniors. Well, the problem is with the draft getting shortened, we had guys that were incoming that would probably have been great, you know, 10th to 40th round picks uh, at a high school or guys currently on our roster uh, that would have been, you know, teens – kind of picks late eight, nine, 10 uh, rounds. So it just backlogs it. Uh, we don't really do anything early. Uh, we haven't even really started 22s. We'll, we'll wait and be sure. Um, and if, if we're going to move early on somebody, it's going to be somebody that we feel is pretty special. But so we don't have a whole lot of guys, 21s, no 22s. Um, but it does put a roster crunch on the 21 group, I think for sure. All the JUCO guys, I mean, the transfer portal's full of great players, good players that have to leave the school that they're at because there's no room for them. So it's just – it's tough. I mean, the good news is that we have all of our guys coming back. Everybody wants to come back. We don't have anybody that's wanting to leave. And, you know, that we just – and Coach Hennon's honored those guys. I mean, we're not asking – we're not recruiting anybody right now. So really, in this time period – I'm staying connected with a couple guys, not many, that I feel really strongly about through text, through phone calls. Um, 
but you know, getting emails, reading emails, looking at videos. Um, but right now we don't really know. I mean, we have a pretty big junior group positionally that we thought we were going to have to replace. But now with their coming back as redshirt juniors, you know, we really have two years to replace some of those guys. Hopefully some of them get a chance to play this year or after next year. Uh, we have to replace them. But but right now, I mean, you're just full. So you, you can't keep recruiting. So getting to spend time with the family, really. <laughs> yeah, that, do all that. yeah, that hasn't happened in a while, has it? <laughs> no, no. This will be the only time ever yep. that I've been able to to be around my family. And it's been great. Right. And, and, th- and that's kind of alludes to a, a several things. You know that that's the that's the tough part that that people that uh, a lot of people uh, just just don't understand. Um, you know, as far as the aspect, I know when I was at uh, well, Mars Hill and Asheville. You know, some of the, even the parents on our team would be like, you know, after a season, hey, I hope you have a good summer. Uh, what are you going to do this summer? Like, wh- what do you mean? What am I going to do? I'm not going to sleep in my bed this summer. Is, is is basically the answer. You know what I mean? So. Um, just just talk a little bit about that as far as you know normal typical year i mean when is your downtime just a little bit in november and december or or, or what yeah i don't i try not to do anything in november or december we'll have you know, a little hidden camps or something but you know nothing much in the beginning of january it's pretty slow uh, until the guys get back on campus but I don't know. I'm a, I'm a creature of habit. I'd just soon be moving and having a routine and a schedule and, and grinding through some days. Um, it just goes faster. I work better. I operate, you know, more efficient, feel better about everything, whenever that's happening. It's that's then the tough part about not really having a schedule is just, you feel like you're wasting time, you know, not doing anything or being lazy, but I don't know. It's, you don't have much downtime in the summers. You definitely don't with the Sun Belt travel. We know we'll fly three times a year and go out the day before um, to practice on their field. And so the spring, the spring's been extremely slow. Right. Yeah. Another uh, another thing I want to point on is you you talk about creature of habit and 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 all that kind of stuff. It's I think it's obviously started. You know, probably when you were younger, but you know, college baseball, man. You know, I always say if if you can play for four or five years in in college, depending on if you have a red shirt year, or injury year, and, and you're pretty much ready for the real world because you know you're getting up early. You know, you're staying up late for for study hall. The the social time. You know, you got to make sure you know everything else is done before that. If you have some success in a classroom and and on the field a little bit, you're about ready for anything that that life throws at you. Yeah, there, there's no doubt, especially baseball will beat you up. I mean, nobody's had a, a great season that doesn't have a, a, you know, a low point or a lull at some point. So, but yeah, our guys, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a job. It doesn't feel like a job. I mean, what I do to this day doesn't feel like work. I go in with a good group of, of coaches, a great head coach every day that I enjoy going into the office, figuring out the problems every day is a little bit different. Um, but as a player, and I didn't know that going in, but um, my head coach, Todd Raleigh, he got me ready for whatever came next. I mean, I could, I could have done anything. And really, it just teaches you a lot about to be resilient, to deal with adversity, um, and just get you ready because, you know, life's not fair and not everything goes your way every, every single day. Right. And you can't wake up and when you're sick and – uh, it doesn't matter when you, you you're a you're a husband or you got kids, man. It, it you know you got to get go to work and, and and get it done. And and that's I think that's the life lessons that that it really teaches you, man. And 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 gets you know uh, you know everybody wants to do well in baseball, get drafted, all this kind of stuff. But you know it really preps you for life. And and I've kind of seen that you know throughout some of my guys. I just had a guy text me here just a few minutes ago. Want my on my address, uh, you know, he just got just got engaged and, and they're setting a wedding date. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and that's that's the special stuff right there, man. You know, um, the, those kind of relationships you have. Yeah, <clears throat> no doubt. And it teaches you to work with people and within a group, and that's huge because 
you know, you're, you, you will form different groups throughout your work life. And just the ability to work with people is, is very important for productivity. Right. I was talking to a couple of guys last night uh, on the phone and a couple of parents and, and we were talking about, you know, uh, we were talking about some college rosters and, and, and what it was. And, you know, some junior colleges depend on where you are, some division two depend on enrollment. And, and Division One, you you know, you're at 35 uh, to to finish up with, and, and I, I think, you know, I think it's very important to be educated in the recruiting process. On, on every school's different, you know, every school's different. Everybody has different needs. Rosters are bigger. Rosters are smaller, depending on what school you school you're at. Um, but I think the kids have to be educated, no matter what level, Alan. Division One. Uh, Division two, II, Division three, NAI, JUCO, uh, not in that order. Just saying the the, the possibilities of of kids playing ball. Um, they 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 have to be educated uh, when they're you know interested in some of these schools. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, no doubt. Um, they need to be realistic with themselves and their abilities. Um, you know, obviously, the school they need to show you that they want you. With that being said, the only two big leaguers I've ever been around were both walk-ons, you know, so, and we didn't know, we thought, but, you know, you didn't know at the time. But, yeah, I, mean, I think just the fit is huge. You know, I think nowadays people commit so early, they don't, they don't really know what the roster is going to look like, if the coaches are going to be there. Uh, I'd like to see that back up a little bit. And we don't, we don't do a ton of that. We'll wait and we'll see what we need and, and make sure it fits to the best of our ability. But there's good baseball everywhere. I mean, especially in, in North Carolina with as many division ones, the quality of the division two programs, the JUCOs, you know, division three programs, uh, NAI. I mean, you know, it's just, if you want to play college baseball, if you want it bad enough and you're a good student, you're going to find a place to play if you pursue it enough. But the fit is very important. I think that's getting to know the roster. Do you know anybody on the team? You know, it's a, a pretty close network of as a player. I mean, even when I was being recruited or you were being recruited, you knew somebody on the team where you were going, and you got to ask them, like, hey, what's it like? What's Coach like? I know he's putting on a, you know, this is my visit, but is this how he is every day? You know, what's the team like? Do you guys get along? You know, to ask those questions and take your time, I think, is a, a very important thing to do for anyone. Right. Parents, players, make sure you guys listen to that. General uh, people in the public, just general people just listening here. Uh, I think that's crucial, man, uh, that uh, that a lot of people assume as far as in the college baseball part are people that know it, but it wasn't put as, as well as that. I mean, I'm just sitting here in, in Hickory, uh, North Carolina right now, and, you know, within an hour, five minutes, man, we have all those all those divisions, you know what I mean, and multiple conferences within those divisions. It's a, it's unbelievable, and uh, I think you know right fit uh, everywhere has good baseball. They're going to find you if, if if you're worthy of that and and grow into that and and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but you got to have uh, you know a place that is going to be uh, the place that's going you know, set you up for the rest of your life, you know, and, and have a good experience uh, on the college baseball team, whatever that experience was, whatever you're looking for in that experience. Some people don't mind going, you know, to a higher level or their, their, their play may not be as good to get in there and start or, or play right away. Some people may not like that or like that. Other guys want to go somewhere and, and play right away. And uh, I think, you know, that that's, that's huge in finding, um, huge in finding, you know, your place, so to speak. And, uh, you know, thanks for, thanks for putting it like that, um, as that. Uh, as far as some, Alan, we've, me and you've talked a lot, um, you know, about, about this in the past, but what, what kind of, uh, what kind of technology do you guys use, um, down there? I know it's kind of a tech world, um, you know, you've done a good job since, since the start of this, kind of before everything was measured. You had an idea of, of what, you know, you know, uh, launch angle or, 
or, uh, you know, exit velo was and, and, and all that kind of stuff just by watching the game. But what kind of stuff do you guys have nowadays to, 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 um, t- to tell your players and to um, roll stuff out there for those guys? Um, you know, I think the only thing we, we want to get track, man, uh, just to have. But right now it's rap soto for both the pitchers and the hitters. Uh, we'll use it in the cage. Um, it gives data, but it keeps it fun for the guys. Uh, they know what a good swing is. They know what will play in the game. Um, you know, so I, we use it. It's not the end all, but I do. I, I think it's a good tool. I think it keeps it fun. I think knowing how hard the ball or if the ball's spinning the right way off your bat and you have, you know, good back spin or at what angle. I think it's important. I don't think it's everything. I mean, I don't, we don't tell our guys to get underneath the ball or anything like that. We want hard contact through the middle of the field, you know, and a good approach overall. So what, what do you use that to, um, you know, track maybe uh, swings from the fall or freshman to, you know, when they first get on campus to the, to the end of the fall or, or, or anything like that? Yeah, no, I mean, we'll, we'll keep a book on the guys and have some uh, – we'll do Excel sheets, have competitions where we'll have like a line drive competition side of it and we'll have an exit velocity competition to where, you know, you don't have to be the strongest guy to have the best round that day. Post it up for our guys to see. I uh, still keep a, a quality at bat book, you know, with to, to know what kind of at bats the guys are having and to reference quick. Um, I would say the, the biggest piece from what we have down here, we have a, a program called Synergy, and it logs all the guys at bats in the video. And that's huge. That's probably the, our biggest teaching tool is we can go back through those at bats, sort them however we want to, and uh, are able to teach off of that. Not only scout our opponents, but be able to tell our guys, hey, you're doing this or that. Uh, and I think that really helps them. Yeah, absolutely. I want to switch gears a little bit. I appreciate you joining us today and uh, taking your time. Uh, weight room, weight room. What? How? How important is that? Um, you know, with the development and uh, just overall confidence. Um, you know, j- just talk about that a little bit. Strength, weight room. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, it's it's huge for our guys. And we have a, a really good strength coach right now, uh, D-Day, Don Day. He uh, he gets our guys jacked. You know, he we lift heavy. Uh, but it is. I mean, you leave – you feel good about your body. Uh, you know, the ball's coming off your bat a little bit better. Uh, you're gaining some weight. It all goes hand in hand with confidence. You know, you need to be as confident as you can as a baseball player to have success. If, you, if you're doubting yourself one bit, you got no shot. You know, not for sustained success, but uh, I mean, I think the bigger, the faster, the stronger that we can get our guys, I think the better baseball players are going to be. We, you know, we talk about the speed part of the weight room too. Not only you get stronger, but a lot of times you'll get faster with that. Where if everybody could run a tenth better on our whole team, how much better our defense would be? You know, if everybody could take a tenth off their sixty and be a six nine instead of the seven zero then how much better defense would we play? Um, if we were a little bit more powerful and the ball comes off our bat a little bit harder, would we split a gap instead of hitting a single with a big turn? You know, um, so it's it's huge. Um, I started when I was in high school. Um, you know, I had some good high school coaches that helped me start, uh, and I got real strong in college, and, and it was really important when I played. But I say now more than ever, I mean, it's – it's very important. And it's it's not baseball lifts. I mean, our guys go in and deadlift and back squat and bench press. And the stronger that they are, the, the better they feel about themselves, for sure. And that takes some time, too. We don't do any Olympic cleans. Um, we have in the past at places that I've been, but this guy doesn't. Um, just to take it easy on the wrists. Pitchers do a different workout than hitters, but pitchers are still pressing they're still squatting, they're still deadlifting, you know, and it's just a little bit different. And I think that's important too, to know what you're, you know, just to make sure it's not a cookie cutter workout to where it's a little bit different from a pitcher, from a flexibility standpoint to a position player, but you got to lift heavy. If you want to get strong, you need to lift, 
you need to lift weight. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you don't see any guys on, on TV, the big leaguers, man, any, even even pitchers, you know, they're, they're not up there with, with small forearms or 150 pounds, you know what I mean? Uh, those guys no, are – they're jacked. Like, yeah, yeah. So – and that and that's the thing. I think that was very important, um, you know, for, for my career, and I think you alluded to it to yours as far as getting – getting in the weight room and all that. And and I finally made a turn, I think, in high school when I didn't worry about being sore for my game the next day and just freaking lifted, man, you know. Because in the big picture, are we trying to get ready for a summer league when I'm 13 years old or 14 or 15? Does that, you know, does me striking out, you know, seven instead of six, uh, you know, and throwing my 72 up there, does that really matter in the big scope of things? You know what I mean? I guess that process. Oh, yeah. get bigger and stronger. Yeah, I mean, our guys will lift. Um, I'd say three or four times a week in the off season, three times a week to two in the end season, and sometimes it's on game days. And sometimes our guys do better after they lift on game days, or even if it's a practice or an inter squad day, and the ball's jumping off their bat and be like, "My goodness, we need to do this every day." So some of those guys will go through there and get a little pump in before BP on a game day, Good and stuff. that's what they do. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. And, 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 you know, some of that, like you said, you know, some of that's in, individualized. Hey, what, it, what, what helps me tick? What helps me get prepared? Um, it's just like any kind of other routine. But there's, you know, especially in college, that's why I love it so much, man. Guys are in there together. Um, and, 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 you know, some of the weight rooms I've been in, you know, you're screaming, hollering, getting guys jacked up. I mean, those are the, those are the awesome times, man. Yeah, our our weight training coach last year on max out day had a DJ. He paid a DJ to come in and DJ the max out um, for deadlift, and guys hit stuff that they had no business hitting, and they they were excited. Now you couldn't hear yourself think it was so loud in there, but he was he was spinning some stuff and and getting them fired up. It was great. Do love that. That's that's my kind of guy right there, man. I may have to come down there this year for that stuff. That's what I thrive on. Me and Grant will yeah. take a trip down there. I'll get him to. Get him to take down there. That's awesome. Well, yeah. um, just some, you know, like I said, I f- appreciate you taking your time, man. I know, you, I know, you got a lot going on as far as, um, you know, just trying to trying to get all your thoughts together. I know you're doing a lot of meetings and and, and all that kind of stuff. But um, what kind of final thoughts you got, just in general? If I'm a man, you know, I'm a 15, 16 year old kid. Whether it's in North Carolina, Georgia, it really doesn't matter. It's Florida, what? What what are some of the, you know, maybe a couple of things I can do to, um, you know, really, I strive to strive to play college baseball. What are a couple of things that that you would kind of throw out there and say, hey man, let let's let's focus on this a little bit. Yeah, and I would say hang out with people that want to play college baseball or college sports. I mean, I had three really good friends uh, growing up that we all played college somewhere, one football, one soccer and another baseball. And, you know, we rolled together, you know, and with that comes some accountability and, Hey, what do you want to do? Let's go lift. Let's go run. Let's work out, you know, let's hang out. And usually when we're hanging out, we're playing baseball, King Griffey junior baseball on super Nintendo, or, you know, uh, it was before PlayStation, but you know, you hang out with those people um, and you work, you know, I mean, there's, you're, it's never enough. I mean, it just depends on how bad you want it. Right. That's good, man. That's good. The, now, your your hometown, or I guess we're over South Caldwell. Are you are you a Hudson guy, Granite Falls? What is it? No, I'm Hudson. You're for Hudson. sure, hundred percent. Right. Yeah. All right. Good. <laughs> Very good. I walk. I ran through there the other day, and I said, I, I think Cody Church is from there, right? Yeah. Yeah, Cody Church and. Sign of Madison Bumgarner, and then there was a sign a little bit lower, yeah. home of Alan Beck. Man, that's awesome stuff, man. I yeah, love it. I hear you. I love it. The legend still lives down up here in uh, in North Carolina. But I appreciate you coming on today, man, and uh, look forward to seeing you. And uh, and uh, good luck to you guys. Yeah, I, you know, and w- what you guys are doing there. I mean, there was no place to work out. I mean, I'm sure it was the same way when and when you were growing up. I mean, we we hit we hit outside. I mean, it was – and there was no cage. There was no L screen, no balls. I mean, you had, you know, a couple balls that you had. I mean, a dozen maybe, you know. And But what you guys are doing there is great for the for the youth. I mean, I'm sure they're taking advantage of it. But, 
you know, I would have been down there, begged my mom to take me when I was growing up for sure. Yeah, man. You and you, you know, what, what we just added, you love that weight room we got in there, man. It's uh, yeah, it's top notch. You know, Grant wasn't uh, Grant wasn't going to oh, yeah. on that thing. <laughs> nah. <laughs> no doubt. All right, man. Appreciate it, dude. Thanks so much. Yeah.